We are here again with hot news from the fronts of the Ukraine-Russia war. Today, hot clashes and critical events took place at many points of the 2,500-kilometer front line. Soldiers of the invading troops started the day with missile attacks. Targeting many regions of Ukraine, the Russian army launched more than 70 missile attacks over the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea. In the early hours of yesterday morning, when Ukrainians woke up in panic, the southern regions of the country were at risk. However, since the air defense systems provided by the USA and the West to the Kiev army were constantly active, almost all of these Russian attacks were repelled. The capital, Kiev, also had its share of attacks. On the same day as the missile attacks launched by the Russian army over the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, 40 missile attacks were carried out on the capital of Ukraine, Kiev. 37 of the 40 missile attacks carried out by the invading troops on Kiev regardless of innocent Ukrainian citizens, sins, were shattered by the Ukrainian air defense systems while they were still in the sky. The masters of the sky from the inventory of the Ukrainian army were at work again. The U.S. origin NASAMs, French Kotales, and German Iris Ts did not pass the missiles of the Russian troops again. All air defense systems in the aforementioned Ukrainian army inventory are currently operating with 100% performance. The more Russia fails, the more aggressive it becomes. Therefore, the tension on the war front was rising rapidly and the attacks of the Russian troops in Kiev were increasing. Explosions occurred in different parts of Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. Citizens took shelter in metro stations to protect themselves. Kiev Mayor Vitaly Klitschko, in a statement on his social media account, warned citizens not to leave the shelters. Klitschko said, the attacks on the capital by the Russian army continue. According to reports in Ukrainian media, civilians lost their lives and were injured as a result of the attacks in the cities of Kharkiv, Kurs Kursin, Kriviri, and surrounding settlements outside of Kiev. A few days ago, the Ukrainian army took a striking step on the verge of these brutal attacks by Russian troops. In fact, the place that is currently considered to be the heart of the war is the Crimean Peninsula. And the advances of the Ukrainian army in this region, which shook the agenda, caused panic in the Moscow administration. Now let's take a look at the latest situation in and around the Crimean Peninsula. On the war front, the tension was at its peak again today. The Ukrainian army is now very close to the Crimea. The Kiev soldiers are currently blockading this peninsula. To reach the borders of Crimea, the Ukrainian army soldiers have to cover a distance of 84 kilometers from Melitopol. Once Melitopol and Kherson are fully controlled, Crimea will be cut off from the southern coast of Ukraine and Crimea will be blockaded by both land and by sea. Then Zelensky's army will have finally reached the Crimean Peninsula. In this case, the Ukrainian armed forces will both provide full fire control of the land corridor, and the peninsula range will be much closer to the high Mars of the Kiev army. Currently, preparatory work for the Crimea continues rapidly in the Kiev army. According to some intelligence reports obtained today, the Ukrainian Armed Forces has already deployed its special forces at critical points in the Crimea and the Melitopol and Kherson Triangle. It is also claimed that some Ukrainian troops in the Mykolaiv region have started to advance towards Kherson to support this operation plan. In Odessa, on the other hand, it is not expected that the Kiev soldiers in this region will participate in the Crimean operation, since the heavy bombing attacks of the Russian troops, especially on civilian infrastructures and facilities, are very intense. But nothing is clear right now. War fronts are full of surprises, especially these days. In an instant, with an unexpected all-out Ukrainian army attack, Kiev can retake the Crimean Peninsula. Tension is escalating fast. This progress, which worried the Russian admin administration, was also widely covered in the media. The commander of the Ukrainian armed forces, Valery Zeluzhny, shared with the media his statements that will surprise everyone with the approach of the Kiev soldiers to Melitopol today. Everyone focused on the striking statements of the commander of the armed forces of Ukraine. About the advance of the Ukrainian army between Melitopol and Crimea, Zeluzhny said, To reach the borders of Crimea, we have to cover a distance of 84 kilometers to Melitopol as of today. By the way, that's enough for us because Melitopol will give us a complete fire control of the land corridor, because HIMARS long-range missile systems, which are in our army's inventory, can target Crimea even now. But once our soldiers reach Melitopol, we can shoot much more effectively. Depending on the task at hand, I can calculate what kind of resource is needed to build a combat capability. Was Valery Zeluzhny giving the signals of the great Crimean attacks that the whole world was waiting for? Was Ukraine now determined to make moves to end the war? 
Were Zelensky's dreams coming true? It may be too early to answer these questions, but the Ukrainian armed forces was bringing U.S. HIMARS closer to the Crimean border with each passing day. As the Ukrainian troops advance in the Crimean firing line, it seems that Russian leader Vladimir Putin will have to double the measures he's taken on this peninsula. As reported on December 10th and 11th, the Ukrainian army blew up three important strategic centers of the Russian invaders in and near the temporarily captured Melitopol. As a result of the attacks carried out by the Ukrainian army in this region, dozens of Russian soldiers were killed and at least 200 were injured. Now we move on to Bakhmut. The city of Bakhmut, located in the Donetsk Oblast, has become the center of violent explosions and attacks, especially in the last few weeks. In Bakhmut today, again, the sound of missiles was the factor that broke the calm. Today's Russian attacks proved that the Moscow army was still insistent on Bakhmut. The Ukrainian defense, defense forces has done quite well in this city. Bakhmut has become another symbol of Ukraine's invincibility. Since August, Russia has been trying to raise the city to the ground, sacrificing thousands of its soldiers to seize a few kilometers around the city. But the Ukrainian army continued to defend the city at the cost of their lives today. Violent Russian attacks in Vimka, Yakovlivka, and Solodar a few days ago took the region prisoner. On the Bakhmut front, where airstrikes and ground operations continued throughout the day, the Ukrainian forces managed to repulse these attacks with little casualties. On top of that, the soldiers of the Kiev army, after repelling these attacks, managed to inflict serious blows on the Russians in the regions of Bakhmut, Klitschivka, and Andreevka. Heavy clashes took place in these three regions. The Ukrainian army destroyed the command posts and trenches of the soldiers of the occupying troops. Heavy bombing attacks organized by the Moscow army took place in the cities of Kurdyumivka, Ozaryanivka, and Druzhba today. By taking an active role in these settlements, the Ukrainian defenders managed to prevent 90% of these attacks organized by the Russians. The Moscow army was only able to damage the city infrastructures and facilities in these settlements located in the Donetsk city of Bakhmut. However, it was claimed that dozens of Russian soldiers were killed as a result of the counterattacks by the Ukrainian soldiers against the invading troops. Now we're going back to the Crimea, where the heat of the war has risen. We mentioned that Russian troops have increased their security measures against Ukraine's attack plans, threatening Crimea. According to the latest hot information, the Russian armed forces is preparing to repel possible attacks of the Ukrainian army in the temporarily occupied Crimea. In occupied Crimea, the Russians are trying to further strengthen the coastline, fearing the landing of Ukrainian troops. In particular, along the coast near the village of Molokna, the Russian army created a mine barrier and a network of trenches. In addition, the Russian armed forces installed concrete pyramid rows in Crimea to stop the advance of heavy equipment, called Dragon's Teeth, in the words of the intelligence main directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. Russia had already begun to build sandcastles on the beach. This is a seriously pathetic tactic. It was stated that the Moscow army, which was so afraid of the attacks of the Ukrainian army, is still digging the beach at the moment. From February 24th to date, the Ukrainian armed forces have eliminated about 97,270 Russian soldiers in the past day, including 680 invaders. In addition, as of December 16th, the Ukrainian army destroyed 2,980 tanks, 5,952 armored personnel vehicles, 1,946 artillery systems, 410 MLRS, 211 air defense systems, and many more military equipment belonging to the Russians. It is much more interesting that Russia still continues the Ukraine war with these huge losses. But the winter season is seen as the deciding factor in this war. We will see whether Russia will continue with this war, in which it has been severely injured, as the winter makes itself more felt.